Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the other side of weight loss. So we're talking about my favorite thing today, which is hormones. And as many of you know, if you're trying to lose weight, you absolutely have to balance your hormones. And one of the worst times for women is perimenopause. And so we are going to be diving into I don't know, kind of all things hormones, but you know, I really want to dive into perimenopause because my guest today is the expert on this. Her name is Dr. Anna Kobeka. Dr. Anna Kobeka, an Emory University trained gynecologist in women's health expert was diagnosed with early menopause at age 38. Devastated, she went around the world looking for answers and healing and found it. She is now a triple board certified menopause and hormone expert. She is internationally acclaimed for her work in gynecology and obstetrics. Let's get that right. Integrative medicine and anti aging and regenerative medicine. Dr. Kobeka has changed the lives of thousands of women across the globe, connecting to others through humor, honesty, and passion. Her book, The Hormones, fix and other empowering transformation programs have helped women of all ages become their best selves again. So welcome Dr. Anna Kobeka. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Karen. Great to be here with you. Yes. You're just like, you talk my talk, Dr. Anna Kobeka. (laughs) I tell you, we've been intertwined here in the same sphere for a while and it's awesome to finally really connect. So yeah. And so I, I just want you to tell your story because to so many women that have been told when they go into their doctor to say, I feel like I'm going through menopause. And the doctor says, nope, you're too young for that. Well, you've got your own story about that. So I would love for you to share it with the audience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I was diagnosed at age 39 as premature ovarian failure, early menopause. I I was told that I would never be able to conceive a child again. I'd failed the highest doses of infertility therapy and treatment. I'm an Emory University trained gynecologist and obstetrician. Right. So this information was devastating. And we didn't talk about, well, maybe we can reverse it. Right. Or it's, you know, it had a significant amount. And my, my story is, you know, Karen, it, you know, it, it um, is a really traumatic story because, you know, while I'm raising my kids, running my medical practice, running my offices, you know, you're a mom, you have yeah. different hats. And, you know, I had uh, three small children, my stepdaughter at the time. And my son died in a tragic accident. Oh. And so in in just an instant, I went from breastfeeding this beautiful baby boy. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, um, and, And that my body just completely shut down. Yeah. You know, completely shut down. So, you know, I mean everyone has trauma in their life, right? And I always say don't compare because each of us has our own unique story. And, you know, so, you know, when I tell my story, I I like to emphasize that because, um, you know, they say my, my goal has been to inspire other women never to give up. I mean, I remember what it feels like to want to die and, not get out of bed and it hurt to put my feet on the floor and I had physical heartache. We talk about heartache. My heart physically hurt, hurt. And um, as part of this journey, my grieving process, I actually left my medical practice and went around the world. You know, again, I was told that I would never be able to have another child. This was devastating news upon devastation to me, my husband, my kids. And I would failed, like I said, the highest doses of fertility meds and you know, we didn't talk about reversing menopause. We didn't say that, you know, well, well, it can understand what's happening to your physiology. And, and honestly, that's what I've spent the last um, 13 years digging into at this point. And from this journey around the world, learning traditional medicine modalities, other spiritual techniques, f- framing my journey in another way, in a, in a um, purposeful direction was also a key part of it. And I say God's hand was in my life the whole time, even though I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I met healers serendipitously from ancient um, Indonesian healers based on traditional medicine for generations, multi, multi generations, and an Andean philosopher and a Native American shaman to some of the leading scientists in Germany, New Zealand, um, Israel. I mean, really, 
it was phenomenal what I learned on this journey. And as a result of all these things and a lot of grace, I um, became pregnant and delivered Ava Marie when I was 41 years old. Wow. So reversed menopause completely. She's 11. I'm 53. Whoo, God help me yet again, right? <laughs> That's a, I got shivers when you said that. Wow. Amazing. Yes. Hey, wow. yes. I love it. I love it. And the first part that, that just gets me with this story is you, like you said, you were this board certified gynecologist. And one of the most typical questions I get from clients is, well, can't my doctor do this for me? Can't my doctor test my hormones? My doctor says I'm not in perimenopause. You know, they won't check my hormones because I'm too young. So where's this disconnect happening between the medical world and what's actually happening? And it's not your physician. I'm going to say this. It's not your physician's hmm. fault. The insurance companies, it's like mafiosa medicine, right? What will they pay for? And yeah. so ignore that completely. What are you worth? You're priceless, right? Yeah. And we can cash pay for lab testing. And I, and I teach this in my book. I teach this online. You know, we can cash pay for lab testing for a fraction of a, you know, a, um, what the insurance company, what we'd have to pay if we were filing our insurance, for instance, even mm -hmm. in the most cases and tests that aren't approved because they're not standard of care or you don't have a diagnosis. And once you get that diagnosis, your insurance rate's going up. Don't forget that one, right? Yeah. Qualify for you to pay for this testing. So just because we want it, the insurance company, number one, isn't going to approve it and the doctor will get penalized for ordering it, right? They get dinged. For these things nowadays with this electronic medical record, you know, big daddy spyware system that we've got going on. <laughs> I don't know. Do pay, pay it, keep it under the table, keep your diagnosis to yourself, learn. You are your own best yes. advocate. You are smart, right? We are smart. Mm -hmm. We are smart and intelligent. We can figure, we can discern for ourselves what works for us and what works against us. Now, as a physician, believe me, I want some credit for helping. Yeah. Other people. <laughs> I do want some credit. I did. I've been in school for 20 something years of oh. post, uh, post secondary education. So, you know, um, but really it's 90% in each of our hands and within each of our powers and that, and, and within our power. And I want to teach that I want, and that's what I teach and it, get, providing natural solutions. So Karen, you know, for example, like we see so many women in this perimenopause state, it's not like I'm in menopause, right? Very few of us, I think 2% or, or less, anywhere from 10 to 2% go through menopause, like asymptomatically, I just oh, had I my, my period yeah. stopped, I had no problems. What no was hot flash? I think I got hot yeah. once. <laughs> I did yeah, have a maybe. client that said that. Oh, I kind of got this hot thing once I think was a hot flash and I'm That's like, okay. oh, you are so lucky. <laughs> so lucky. Menopause is mandatory. Suffering is optional. And we can't settle when we're suffering with any symptoms, whether it's a headache, whether it's bloating, whether it's ankle swelling, whether it's, you know, the irregular cycle, skip period, breakthrough bleeding, cramping, breast tenderness, breast pain, breast cyst, you know, decrease in libido, mood issues, irritability, you hate your husband two weeks out of the month, right? It's probably not your husband necessarily, right? Not if it's only those two weeks. So all these things are, or there's a hormonal, a physiologic base to this. Yes. And, and it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. So there, there's that hormonal component. And then there's the lifestyle component that encompasses, you know, a, a huge amount of nutrition. I, I call it the keto green lifestyle, this yeah. keto green lifestyle, this way to empower our body and, and address two of the major hormones, which are cortisol and insulin. So we get those under control. Our other hormones, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, even DHEA are better Thyroid. in balance, right? Yeah. And as a gynecologist, as I figured this out, as I went through my journey, as I reversed menopause the first time, and, um, and you know, through using natural products like, like Mighty Maca Greens, I learned about maca in Peru mm -hmm. and the Una de Gado in Peru. And I put that a combination of things along with resveratrol, turmeric, milk thistle, I mean, powerful um, extracts and, and other antioxidants to really help uh, our body, you know, immunity in so many ways and detoxification in so many ways. So as I started doing this, when my clients came in, you know, with their PMS symptoms and their, you know, irritability and their sleeplessness and, and these symptoms, I could use a natural approach. And from a clinical standpoint, that 
enabled me to go from two to three surgeries every one to two weeks to two to three a year. Wow. That's the difference. The body heals. The body can heal. Yeah. So let's back this up a little bit and let's talk about why, what is happening? Like, why do we have such bad hormonal dysfunction going through perimenopause? Like you said, it's like 1% of women don't have symptoms. The rest of us are, it's a couple of years to up to 10 years of suffering for a lot of women, if Mm -hmm. not more. And you hear about other countries that don't have perimenopause symptoms. So what is going on in our bodies that's, that, that's making this happen like this? Yeah, yeah. And it's a really good question. And so that there's the natural aspect, right? Our hormones naturally decline. Our ovaries are responsible as women for a, a large production of our progesterone, of our DHEA, you know, our estrogen and, you know, our, our sex, our sex hormones. So that's a big function. As we get older, over age 35, we become what's called advanced maternal age. And we have a decrease ovarian supply of decreased ovarian reserve typically. And so the levels of hormones are less and specifically progesterone declines. And so we expect the irregular cycles as a gynecologist, I focus on all the menstrual cycles, but at the same time, the patient's coming in with PMS, worsening PMS, irritability, the, the symptom of like, I hate my husband. Right. You know, and, um, and, um, anxiety, yeah. sleeplessness, brain fog, memory issues, weight gain, Weight gain, weight gain without doing anything different. Yes. Yeah. Weight gain without, and, you Lots know. Lots of belly fat happening. That's yes. why I hear that a lot. Yes, absolutely. Five, 10, 20 pounds, and I yeah. haven't done anything different. That was me too it, when I hit a second uh, near menopause at 48. So, um, and I, I talk about that in the hormone fix too. That's a great story. And so, um, so what we do, you know, at that point is when the client's coming in, the, what I would do is take lab work, right? Let's, you know, what gets measured gets managed. So let's look at some testing. I do a lot of inventories and quizzes, which I've put in my book too, the hormone fix, because like you have, you have your beautiful hormone quiz on your website. Where are you now? Where are you in a month? Right. And we want to see those numbers improve. We want to see that if you, know, we want to see our results improve. And that's a way that we can address, you know, follow very inexpensively. Yeah. And, and so what we do, what I would do while I'm waiting for the lab results is have clients do an earlier version of my keto green diet and um, eliminate, eliminate the high inflammatory foods, right? No grains, no white, no wheat, no sweet, very little red meat. And, you know, if you can pick it, peel it, fish and hunt it, milk it, grow it, then for the most part, you can eat it, right? Like adhere to those rules. And, um, you know, healthy fats bring healthy fats back in because our hormones are derived from fats. And that really helps us as we People don't realize that. Do you think that this no, the no, like I was raised on no fat, my mom would call butter Vaseline. It was like, and she was like a health expert back in the day, right? She worked at a weight loss company and it was like, we were, we had to have dry popcorn. There was no butter on anything. It was like, if anything, there'd be a little bit of margarine, God forbid. But really, I mean, do you think- Totally destroyed our hormones. Yes, I think so. I was in college in the eighties and for sure, you know, that low fat movement, high carb. I mean, yeah, no, it was- it has devastated our hormones and our waistline. Yeah, really. Yeah. So why, why do you, why, what made you gravitate towards using a ketogenic style diet for women's hormones? Yeah. So, you know, when I was hitting 50, 48, you know, and I had a daughter in each grade level, so a elementary, a middle school and a high schooler. And I was cycling down. I, had, I still had post-traumatic stress, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Like I'd been able to heal physically, lose 80 pounds, keep it off for a decade. And, um, you know, get my fertility back and my periods back until this time. We were, um, I was really struggling with PTSD, and the under the surface PTSD. And I was then experiencing, so I was having some brain fog, you know, definitely relationship issues, struggling as a single mom at this point, because divorced um, quite a few years earlier. Also, you know, um, and I write about this in the book because of the cortisol oxytocin 
connection, disconnection, you know, just the hormonal consequences of trauma. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so what happened is that, you know, I started gaining the five, 10, 20 pounds without doing anything different. And I'd been way over 240 pounds and anyone listening, you know, when you've lost weight and the scale starts creeping up again, you're like, shoot, I'm not doing anything different. Severe panic. Panic. panic when is button. It, when is it going to stop when I'm 300 pounds? I mean, when will it stop? Right. And so I, you know, implemented a very low carb keto approach, very similar to my anti candidal programs that I would put patients on. But I noted every time I put clients on a keto diet for whether it was for seizures, whether it was for candida issues or um, they, in the perimenopause age range, they would say, you know, I don't like how I feel on it. I'm feeling irritable. And for me, I called it going keto crazy. And as a single mom with, you know, three girls in school, you just, you cannot afford keto crazy. No. <laughs> I was like, who is this person? Like, you know, reacting instead of responding, right? Mm, and making yeah. some poor, poor decisions, you know, with that brain fog. Well, the reason is now we know, I mean, the recent research is that, you know, when our, as our hormones are declining, estrogen, we know estrogen, but I really believe progesterone because this curve of the brain's ability to, so the brain's ability to use glucose for fuel declines as we age, but it sharply declines in this perimenopause time period, just like our progesterone sharply declines. Ah. So we associate it as, um, utilization of glucose in the brain is an estrogen dependent process. So progesterone, we need progesterone to make estrogen as well. So it's a double whammy. And, and so that's huge. So the brain fog, the irritability, the difficulty sleeping, that's a physiologic problem. It is not your fault. But what we have to do is change the fuel to our body to rebalance our hormones. So we have to shift to using ketones. So I went to this carbohydrate restriction, right? Got into ketosis. I'm a functional doc, you know, with anti-aging degrees and all this stuff. I'm checking my urine pH. I'm acidic, 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 and I'm feeling keto crazy. I'm like, well, this will never work. You know, this will never work. So I was like, and I think okay. a lot of women feel this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I hear it all the time. The key is the alkalinizing approach. And that's the green component of keto green. That's the alkalinizing component because, you know, and this is measuring urine pH. Urine pH is another vital sign, Karen. I encourage people to measure it because just like checking your pulse or checking your blood pressure, checking your weight, I mean, it tells you something. How am I doing, right? Your urine pH can tell you the same thing. When you're stressed, you're going to be more acidic. When you eat a food sensitivity, you're going to be more acidic, right? When you're eating too much glucose and you're, you know, what? whatever, you're going to be more acidic. When you're eating high keto diet without enough greens and alkalinizers, you're going to be more acidic and we have to have that balance. So adding low carbohydrate plant-based foods like beet greens, collards, kale, um, chard, and um, the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli sprouts, cauliflower, you know, all of those really good nutritional things that also help support hormone detoxification became crucial. Mm -hmm. I started doing that. I'm half Portuguese, so making big batches of kale soup and putting the bones in there. So bones, so think of a bone broth with lots of kale and some good chorizo. And, um, and yes. you know, till I, till I was really alkaline and then I restricted the carbs even more wow. to become, to go into ketosis again. And so then you've got an alkaline pH and get into ketosis. Oh my God. Let me tell you, it is like, it is like Christmas and it's you like just feel like, spot. wow, it is a yeah. sweet and you'll see in my keto green community when people are uh, showing the urine pH and ketone strips. So that's what I have them checked is the urine pH and ketones and, and see what you're body does, but then we're using ketones for fuel, which we can use with whatever estrogen and, and, and um, progesterone levels we have. And ketones is to jet fuel as, you know, glucose is to gasoline. Right. So yeah. it is an optimal brain fuel source. And then what happens? Less anxiety, less irritation, more energy, less depression, better quality sleep, right? Yeah. And and so that, that combination is critical, especially for women. Men can do keto better. They have 10 they times sure can. more testosterone. Yeah. They yeah. produce six times more estrogen in the brain because we're relying on our ovaries. And so they're not going through this. No. Yeah. My husband, he's on keto and he, we're 
half ass keto with fasting and lost 25 pounds in like two months. I was like, really? That would take me like five years of fast. <laughs> it's not fair. But yeah, and it boosts their testosterone. When with women, we need to be more careful with it. And I love this idea of more greens. All of my keto plans always have a ton of vegetables in it. I was just on a forum at, uh, I think it was Dr. Berg's, I think in Dr. Fung's, I want to say, uh, I think that's who it is. It's a keto forum. I just go on there just to see what people are saying. And this, this one woman was saying, Oh, you know, I, 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 I've stopped losing weight and all these people jumped on saying you need to cut out the vegetables. And I'm like, no, you don't need to, you probably need to up the vegetables yeah. down the vegetables. So do you eat things like, like carrots, like a more starchy vegetable as well? Or is it, are we just talking just the greens? Yeah, very rarely will I eat any carrots, but like I'll still do I cucumbers, celery, lots of greens and sprouts, you know, and blue, I mean, blueberries, a little bit of blueberries, you know, every once in a while, a sliver of beet, put that in, you know, different vegetables. You can have a little bit goes long, even a sweet potato in the evening, yeah, you know, totally. and I want to cycle in and cycle out. We need that metabolic flexibility. Yes. So, you know, I'm, and because we get so much good nourishment from, you know, our veggies, that's really important too. And if we're menstruating, you know, that's, you know, like life without chocolate, that won't be fun. I mean, seriously, there's some, yeah, like we got to get that in there. And it's supposed to help lower your cortisol. So I think you go to it. it. And as you exercise this keto muscle, this keto green muscle, it's easier and easier and easier. And it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. So don't get frustrated. Every consider every day, part of a discovery, what's working for you what's not working for you. Yeah. I love the testing part of it. There's so much that we can do from home that people don't realize, like get yourself a blood sugar monitor that also tests ketones, right? I mean, there's these these such easy tools that you can have at home. And like you said, the pH urine strips too, super cheap, do it from home so you can start testing yourself. So there's a lot of controversy on whether or not pH can be tested through urine. And I know you've talked about that before. So can you explain, there's, there's some people that say it can't be tested, like it, unless you're testing blood, I think it said. Yeah. Now that's, this is where like this alkaline myth and all this stuff comes up. Right. And it's like, you know, it just makes me crazy (laughs) because, you know, as a, as a gynecologist, as a physician and, you know, Emory trained, we work in the ERs, some client comes in crashing I'm going to do a blood gas. I'm going to put a needle in their radial artery, stick a needle into their artery, poof, pump, you know, get a ton of, you know, get this blood out, right? High pressure blood, arterial blood, not venous blood. Like when we go to the lab and draw some blood, we get the arterial blood gas. So straight from as close from the heart as we can get it from the radius, radial artery. We rush that off to the lab and check the pH. That blood pH is slightly alkaline at 7.4 plus or minus, very, very small margins. A little bit higher, a little bit lower, we are sick and crashing. And that's going to require one intervention or another on an emergent basis, right? So that blood g- gas, I mean, there's, there's like very little variety there. But if there's pH variabilities in every part of our body, like the skin creams we use are yep. pH balanced, right? What is it for the acidity of our skin, right? Um, within our um, stomach digestive tract, very acidic, right? So we want a very acidic digestive tract so that it digests the food, right? That's important. Not to dilute our food with lots of fluid so that our digestive enzymes will work or we're going to have digestive problems. Yeah. Pet peeve of mine. And, um, you know, vaginal pH, acidic. Vaginal pH, acidic. Urine pH, alkaline or acidic. I mean, there's a range. The urine pH is, like I said, like a vital sign. It is going to range. It's like your pulse ranges. You're, uh, you know, working out, your pulse is high, you're stressed, your pulse is high, right? So what's going on there? Your urine pH, you're stressed, it's going to be acidic. And you're undernourished, it's going to be acidic. You're eating a lot of acidic foods, it's going to be acidic. What we know, though, with lifestyle and nutritional strategies, when you have an alkaline, more alkaline urinary pH of seven or greater, so seven is kind of neutral, so seven to eight, you know, I mean, there's a a small swing here, but the urine pH tells us so much. 
because it's you know based on minerals you know when we how are we using calcium potassium sodium you know magnesium and and that's a cellular function that's mm-hmm. a cellular function that is happening on a, a you know second you know minuscule basis throughout our entire body you know, billions, billions of times a day, right? That exchange across cell membranes. So we have to provide our body nutrients or we're going to be very acidic. And if, and in order to maintain this beautiful blood pH, if our lifestyle, our stress level and our nutritional status is less than optimal, we are going to need to maintain those minerals to keep that blood pH alkaline. Where are we going to get that from? Bone, muscle, You know, is your hair dry and crackly? Is your skin wrinkly, less elastic? You know, are you losing teeth and having problems? You know, like, and those are signs that we see as we get older. Is there your muscle, your fascia sagging? sagging? Are you getting, you know, like the, the, um, droopy skin and stuff? Man, I'm at time, 53, right? So I get all these things. So empowering your body is really crucial or we're robbing Peter to pay Paul as the saying goes. And so using the urinary pH, scientific studies have shown over and over again that uh, more alkaline urinary pH is healthy for bones as people who have a slightly more alkaline urine pH have decreased diabetes, decreased metabolic syndrome, um, and, you know, decrease in hypertension. So, I mean, that's huge. That's huge because how are we dying? Cardiovascular disease. What puts us in the nursing home? Osteoporosis, mm-hmm. right? So, so it makes perfect sense. And I just say to experience it and consider your urine pH a vital sign. When we're stressed, cortisol goes up, right? What's going to happen? Our blood glucose go- is going up. What's happening at the kidney level? You know, there is an exchange of hydrogen ions across the urine the renal tubules. So what we're getting is a more acidic urinary pH. So those of us who've had trauma and that underlying trauma continues, or we have day-to-day trauma and we're continuing to be like pedal to the metal cortisol or burnout, then when we can enhance our physiology, we're improving our cortisol balance as well. Right. And cortisol is that awareness. Yeah. And cortisol is one of the big impacts on perimenopause, like you said. Yes. And yeah. one thing I found out, Karen, you know, I could be eating everything right. And, you know, if I was struggling to get into, to get an alkaline urinary pH early on, I would recognize those mornings I walked on the beach and came back and did my urine pH testing. I was always alkaline. Wow. So it's not just about what we eat, but eat, you know, nourishing our body, mind, spirit, soul relationships is crucial to good health. Yeah, and crucial to going through perimenopause with lesser symptoms. We always tend to look for the supplement, the medication, the the diet, which is all has to be part of it. But so few women look to say, okay, what about my lifestyle? What about you know, am I happy? I mean, during this time of transition that we go through, it's not just a physical transition, it's also a mental and spiritual transition that I think a lot of women don't figure that out and they and it unsettles them. There's something there and they can't put their finger on it. And it's like, maybe it's because this is the first time in your life where you can actually think about yourself, where you're not having kids, you're not getting married, you're not, well, some people are, but you know what I mean? Like most people are kind of, they've either kept the husband or they got rid of him by this point, you know, but it's a transitional period. And so it's so important to look at all of those levels and take that holistic approach to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't, I can't agree with you more because that is crucial. It's not just one thing. And, uh, you know, it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. Yeah. So we've got so, to look at the big picture. Yeah. And so speaking of that, let's, let's talk about the kind of supplement side of things and medication side of things, because there's always different takes on, you know, whether or not to use bioidentical hormones and different supplements. And I would just love to hear what your advice is for that woman that's going through perimenopause. Is there... First of all, a supplement, I know you're really big into maca and I want you to talk about maca and just how does that help the process of perimenopause? Yeah, yeah. So when part of my journey, as I said, I was infertile and told we would never have another baby and I was early menopause and really struggling in so many ways. And we went to Peru on this journey that this sabbatical I took. 
Um, and uh, everywhere I went, they would say, well, if you're infertile, drink maca. If you're tired, drink maca. If your baby's not thriving, drink maca. And then they would elbow my husband and say, it's the Peruvian Viagra, drink some yeah. maca, right? <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drink maca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? that's, like, that's a pretty good endorsement. Secondly, as a researcher, you know, long time in research, even prior to medical school, like why? What the heck is this? Is it about this mock? And especially mm -hmm. because it tasted terrible to me. Like it I had does. I it. Terrible. Terrible. And so I had to make it, you know, I grew up in a family of cooks, so I had to make it taste good. But I also, if I'm going to drink something that tastes terrible, all right, let me just disclaimer. My Mighty Maca Plus tastes amazing. Okay. My daughter's <laughs> awesome. fifth grade basketball team drinks Mighty Maca. I mean, they're like, man, this is better than Gatorade. I'm like, do not drink that Gatorade garbage. Drink Mighty Maca. So they're all, they're all into that now. But um, so, you know, where was I? Oh, yeah. So I looked at the research. And here, Maca is an adaptogenic herb. It was used by the ancient Incans reportedly. Before they went into battle, they would drink Maca to give them more stamina and endurance for the fight, for the battle. And, um, and then it's rich in arginine, which increases nitric oxide, which is how Viagra works. Wow. It also is rich in histidine, and it's also, um, I guess I mentioned adrenal adaptogenic, and what the research has shown is that it helps with perimenopausal symptoms, helps with hot flashes, helps with sexual function and libido. And, um, and so that's been really phenomenal. Now in my clinical practice, cause when I came back, you know, at first I started mixing it with other things. So my mighty maca plus has 30 other superfoods combined with maca and it's organic kosher maca from Peru. And that's really important. I've been using it this is. source for, for a decade now. Almost. Yeah. Cause not all macas produce the same, is it? No, like, no, it's not very good quality. And it's really important for my listeners to hear that, that it's very important to get a good quality maca like hers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And the altitude that it grows at is different. Right. Too. Right. You know, it really grows at high altitude and the, you know, so the different, you know, the different, um, areas where they grow it has a different composition okay so you know so that was that's interesting to me yeah. it's so fascinating really and uh, when um i studied i studied my several clients as when i first started using this formulation and what we noticed was an improvement in DHEA. Like I, I was PTSD, right? My DHEA level, so looking at DHEA sulfate in the blood, that's one of the markers I like clients to measure. Mm -hmm. There are a few key markers. One of them is DHEAS. That kind of assesses our adrenal status, and we can look at it as a stress marker. And so I was typically in the teens, in the teens, 20s, and really I should be 200. Can you imagine? And so after initiating maca for a couple of months, my Mighty Maca Plus combination, I never could do just straight maca. So I don't have clinical data on using that in my practice. It was always this combination. So I like to clarify because some people will say, well, I'm not getting these results with maca. I'm like, I, you know, I couldn't stomach it, so I can't help you. <laughs> so, but the research even on straight maca is good. And, and, you know, that looks, I mean, that does look good. But in my clinical practice, what we saw was an increase in DHEAS on average in two months by 70% or more. You're kidding. I, you know, no, I have no. been trying to find a natural way to raise DHEA. It's not something I see a lot, but in myself, mine has mm -hmm. been rock bottom for years and just getting worse. And I'm like, so finally I started just taking the DHEA. It's starting to affect my estradiol now. And I'm just like, isn't there something natural that can help raise my DHEA? And, you know, I'm doing lifestyle stuff, but I have been looking. I didn't know. I thought that, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. I thought maca w went down either testosterone pathway or the estrogen pathway it's adrenal adaptogenic so if you're in hypofunction and you like you know initiate it plus of course we want to do the other things too it's yeah. never just one magic pill or product but we see we see an increase we see an increase that's amazing and, i love and it i would say typically start with if you're rock bottom dhea start at two scoops a day recheck in two months. I mean, you can go up to three, four, five scoops really safely. So, but I would start at two scoops a day and then see and where you're at in one month, two months, recheck it and then see if you can bump up a little bit more even just to keep 
bringing it up and it does make a difference. And first thing in the morning, drink it, mix it with water. You can add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, get those digestive juices going first thing because you want to detox. A lot of us, we intermittent fast, but overnight, that extended fast overnight, we're releasing toxins. The sooner we can open up the pathways to clear out those toxins and you know, the better, right? The better. So yeah, that's amazing. And so when, when she says adaptogenic, so everybody hears, is she's basically saying it's whatever your body needs. So whatever hormone levels are low, it will help to to increase those. Well, it also help to it's adaptogenic, so it should help to also uh, level out the ones that are too high as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it should. And it also contains so Mighty Maca Plus also contains resveratrol, turmeric, quercetin, una de gato. Um, mangosteen extract, acerola, but we know turmeric, quercetin, and resveratrol specifically are also adaptogenic. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's really powerful too. So the again, it's the combination um, between them. It tastes good. That's even better. And it's just so good for the sex drive. Like I yes. just women that are going through perimenopause, we tend to lose the sex drive, and there's nothing better than maca. I re- re- recommend it to all of my clients that are going through that stage because it's like you. I, I've had women come back being like, "Oh, whoa, has that ever increased my sex drive?" <laughs> Which I is- know. I yeah. I love it. I remember a client, and she was in her. Uh, she was 58, and she's like, "You know what?" I've had my first sex dream in two decades. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. I hear about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you have another product that is specifically for the vagina for women that are going through perimenopause. So I would like to, for you to, like, these are all such amazing products. And I want to talk about them. I don't like to sell a lot of stuff. I never sell stuff on my podcast, but I support things like this because we don't see it often enough out there that are specifically for women during this time. And you've got some really good quality things. So what is the, what is it called? Vava? Jolva. Jolva. Joyful vulva. Oh, joyful vulva. Okay. I love it. (laughs) I would like to have a joyful vulva. So tell me what it's about. So important. (laughs) And um, the reason I created it too, you know, my personal, my personal journey, right? Menopausal at 38, what happens to sex drive? What happens to everything else? And you know, the challenges, struggling again um, afterwards as well, but also as a gynecologist, working with clients and just looking at it, once my awareness rose, the toxins, the endocrine disruptors that fight and compete with our body's own hormones, like you got to get rid of all that stuff from the makeup you're using, from the food you're eating, from the, you know, stuff we're washing our clothes in. I mean, we have to get rid of all that stuff yep. because it is destroying our hormones and, and that destroys our kids' hormones too. Yeah. And, and we can't have that. So they, you know, looking at ingredients, there was nothing. And when I retired my clinical practice in 2015, um, my patient, I was, I was compounding and working in the sexual health area since 1999. And um, especially with testosterone and DHEA and following that research. And so I wanted something natural that my clients could get. And so I had a skincare line before, so I created Jolva, so an anti-aging cream for the vulva. And it's, a, it's a, a little bit goes a long way. I made it concentrated, and you don't have to insert it. You apply it clitoris to anus, keep all that tissue healthy, and it works really well. You can also use it as you know, part of like a lubricant or moisturizer prior to intercourse. It's fine for the guys because they could use 10 times the doses we use, it, you know, 10 right. times the amount we use and all that stuff. So and what, we, you know, what we see, because mostly when we have vaginal dryness, we go to our doctor and they say, well, here's some vaginal estrogen. Mm-hmm. And well, you know, estrogen works on the mucosal lining, the first lining of the vagina. So that helps with moisture but it does nothing for the underlying tissue. And, you know, when we look at anti-aging and wrinkle prevention and all that stuff, we want good, healthy, strong muscles, good, healthy, elastic skin, all, you know, all the way deep. And according to the research that looked in vaginal DHEA, it works on all three layers of the vaginal wall. So what we see, the rugation come back, the natural folds, the elasticity, the glandular function, I mean, it's true anti-aging. Wow. And, and that makes a difference. So the clients have better and more pleasurable sex and orgasm. 
decrease accidental urinary leaks when we cough and sneeze. Do always with your pelvic floor exercises. I mean, we should be doing them till we die. So we can do one right now. Pelvic floor exercise, just, Kegel exercise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Women across North America are all doing a Kegel right now listening to this. <laughs> there we go. Yes. And, and, and so that helps in, in that way too. keep the pelvic floor strong. Wow. And that makes a difference. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, because people don't realize it not just gets dry, but it gets thin. the The skin gets thin down there, and it's uh, it's not great, you know. No, no, and it gets worse as we get older if we don't do something about it. But we can completely reverse that, and it can take time. But it's a good first step for sure. That's great. Yeah. See, see yeah, everyone, clean. why I want her to talk about this product? It's necessary. Yeah. Oh man. So what's your take then on the bioidentical hormones? We've talked about the kind of the natural end of things. Let's talk about the medical side. And I'm an advocate for when we need it. And yeah. I typically start low, go slow, but I want to understand why are we struggling? So whether it's men, men's testosterone hormones, women's hormones, what's going on? Because if we're stressed to the max, we're depleting our progesterone. That's our mother hormone. That's a neuroprotective hormone. Nothing is better than the hormones our body is producing naturally. So through, again, the keto green way, the lifestyle and nutrition plan, addressing these areas makes a difference. And, um, and you know, we need sometimes additional support because we can do all these things, but we're getting older. We live in a stressful environment. Sometimes we can't control the situations we're going through, you know, or it's the middle of winter and we haven't seen the daylight, right? So environment can really affect us. So adding in bioidentical progesterone, bioidentical DHEA are usually my first two approaches in women over 40, 45, and sometimes earlier, but I hate to hear you know, about 20 year olds and 30 year olds on testosterone or DHEA oh, and all this stuff that makes me crazy men or women, because that's going to be a thing now. It is. And it's a problem. Know, yeah. I just been recently hearing of these women taking testosterone. I had a young, young client over in Kuwait of all places, but she's like, yeah, I'm on testosterone. So are my girlfriends. I'm like, what? No. What are you doing? She's like 28. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it manipulates our, our psyche too. So we can't forget that, right? Irritable, you know, novelty seeking behaviors, you know, it can affect all of that. Yeah. So that's the problem. And, and again, nothing's better than what our body produces naturally. So, you know, but as we, as we age or in times of crisis, I mean, I'm a regular user of bioidentical progesterone cyclically and also um, DHEA, Jolva, I mean, daily, you know, bottom lips, upper lips. If anyone's had like, I'm wearing my, my Christian Dior red. I'm like, when I first saw my lipstick lines, you know, like lipstick bleed. Oh, yes. I was like, oh no, I started using Jolva, completely went away. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. God. Red. You need to have a skincare line too. Oh, I know. Eventually, Next. eventually. Next. Let's focus on the vulva. Focus yeah, on the vulva. Down below first. And for yeah. any of you that are listening to this podcast, I highly recommend going over to the YouTube channel and just taking a look at this gorgeous woman. You would not think that she is over 50, not in a million years. She looks she looks as good as I do and I'm 43. So there you go. You're, whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you and too. I love, yeah. And I just love that you, you're, you're not, you're talking from experience. You've been to the other side and you've been back now. So it just gives, I think so many women hope that, Hey, you can lose weight. You can feel better. You can feel like you've got a normal, you know, head on you <laughs> because I think people, women will say, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Absolutely. Been there, right? Yeah. Absolutely. My kids will tell you stories. <laughs> Yes, all the children can tell stories. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, mercilessly. Yes, but, yeah, no matter what we're dealing with, and you know, we can improve, right? We can yeah. improve, and that's what I really want to ignite is hope. You know, yeah. is hope and confidence in your body's natural ability to heal itself, to be empowered. And and so part of you know my program is giving your body that resting time mm -hmm. through extended intermittent fasting as well as the right nutrients. And we as women, again, we we are we are different than men. We cannot do keto like men do keto. No. We can't there are very well, let me just say there are very few women who can. I haven't met them, but I imagine. 
Yeah. And so, but we have to do it differently. And we are designed more for that intermittent fasting, extended intermittent fasting, give our body a chance to clean up the the cells that are going awry, right? Mm -hmm. To quarantine those unhealthy cells, the early carcinogenic cells and um, dysfunctional cells. And let's, let's clean, give our body time to rest and repair. How so long do you fast take for? Time. So typically I have my clients in my book, The Hormone Fix, I start them at 13 hours, work up to 15 hours. And like, it's, it's a muscle that we have to exercise as we go, but we have to stop eating by 7 p.m. We have to stop eating by 7 p.m., preferably 6 p.m., and then 13 to 16 hours from dinner to breakfast to have that fast. And when we wake up, we can have a tall glass of water. We can have, you know, and I really emphasize starting with an appreciation moment, a gratitude journal. I sit, I sit in my prayer chair and I'll do some journaling or praying because I've monitored, you know, because it, it it's it leads me to a better day. I'm then more alkaline the rest of the day. So I know my physiology is better. So that's one big thing, but also, you know, it, it sets the framework for my day as well. And I'll drink a tall glass of water first thing, then some apple cider vinegar mixed with mighty maca and some water. And if I'm been acidic for whatever reason, sometimes I'll add even a little bit of baking soda. I mean, let's just get alkaline, get quick, help my help my body support detoxification and, and just move things through. And I'll stay fasting until I break fast with a keto green meal, whatever that may be, a shake, eggs, sprouts, greens on a bed of, you know, beautiful sauteed greens or fresh greens drizzled with olive oil. I mean, healthy fats, healthy protein, um, lots of good greens for fiber and detoxification and the micronutrients that are so empowering. But a really interesting thing, Karen, and your audience is gonna love this. Um, Abbott Pharmaceutical makes a continuous blood sugar monitor for diabetics, and it goes in the back of your arm. I've been wearing one for a month now, uh, two, four, six weeks now, I think. And so um, they last for two weeks. They're called the Freestyle Libre, and you monitor your blood sugar. Well, it's very interesting, and it, and it makes perfect sense. When I would wake up in the morning and have a cup of coffee, my blood sugar would spike 20 to 30 points. So for me, coffee breaks my fast. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause but the cortisol spike will raise your blood sugar. Yeah. Caffeine to cortisol yeah. to glucose. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And so for me, that's breaking my fast. So that bumped me out of ketosis, but mighty maca didn't increase my glucose, didn't bump me out of ketosis. And if I get up and I'm stressed and I'm worried about something, my blood sugar goes up. I'm bumped out of ketosis. Yeah. You right? know what does it for I'm me? I'm still fasting. Yeah. What does it for me is a bad night's sleep. I'll test my blood sugar in the morning and it's always too hot. And it's probably, it's not like super high, but it's higher by a point, sometimes a point and a half higher than what it normally would be, which to right. me is way too high. I'm like, oh, this is, this is ridiculous. And it bumps me out of ketosis. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's really important to recognize. And yeah. And um, it's kind of, it was really very insightful to wear that. And that really helped with the extended fasting and also creating morning and evening rituals to empower physiology. Yeah. Awesome. So let's keep all this in mind, ladies that are listening. You want to test from home, get your pH strips. I'm going to go get some. <laughs> I don't, I haven't I done have, that for have years. Urine pH strips. So I have, I created a combination yeah. one that has. The oh, do you? Oh, on it. nice. Because two things instead of one. And yes. It's easy for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Blood yeah. sugar monitor. I always say that that's such yes. a useful tool to have. I love this idea of a continuous monitor. So it doesn't go yes. into the skin. Does it, do you poke it, it in the skin? There's a filament that goes, so it's not into the blood, but it goes into the inner tissue. Yeah. So it means it's not as good as blood, and it can have a delay of 20 to 50, which is really interesting. You know, you can get one I think without a prescription, I'm not 100% sure. It's from Abbott Pharmaceuticals called the Freestyle Libre, and E1, there's the Freestyle Libre 14 day, and it lasts for two weeks. And um, it costs anywhere between forty to sixty dollars. Wow. So you know, for just kind of that monitoring, like what's happening to my body? If I'm eating this and my blood sugar is going, you know, what's really bumping me out of ketosis? And also just in wearing it, when I would do my boxing exercise, my blood sugar would raise to two hundred. I, I was fasting, and my blood sugar was up 
few hundred, right? It makes sense, right? We need fuel to get the workout through, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's not coming from anything I've eaten, but how fascinating. So that yeah. was, that was really helpful for me to see this. Um, you know, yeah, and just, everybody's going to be different. I think that's what people exactly. don't realize is some people can get away with eating a lot more, you know, higher carbs and other women, like it just all depends on your body and your makeup of your body. And, and you could have a bad night's sleep and your, your blood sugar might not go up like it goes up for mine, or you could drink coffee and it doesn't go up like it does for Dr. Quebeca. So exactly. learn your body, right? Yep. And do you, so before we go, I just want one last question here. Do you think like you have worked with thousands of women, can majority of women sail through perimenopause in your view, if they're doing things right? Absolutely. Without a doubt, without a doubt, without hot flashes, without mood swings, without dryness, without, yeah, without difficulty. Menopause is mandatory, stuff optional. It really is. These therapeutic lifestyle changes that we can make and the fine tuning that we do the you know like it will will make a difference absolutely yeah. yeah that's amazing well thank you so much you guys go and check her out dr com. her book is the hormone fix you can get all of her online uh, shopping stuff at, on, off your website, right off your website, correct? Yeah, DrAnna.com. Dr. Anna. Oh, Dr. Anna. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. DrAnna.com. And I will put that link in the show notes, of course. But go and check it out. Try the, the Jolva. 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 Joyful Volva. <laughs> joyful Volva. Right, right. Of course. How can I forget that? Have a happy, joyful Volva, you guys. Come on. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.